for uh, being here today. Please let me know if you can't uh, hear me talking at any time. And please feel free to make questions. I'll send them to Hazel and she'll give it to me. She'll tell me them later. Um, I'm Bruna. I'm a PhD student at Maynard University. And we, now we're gonna, I'm going to present the talk that I diverse for machine learning. And I put the stickers here, here because those will be the main factors they'll be using. So the ggplot, the dplot, the ggplot, the dplyr package, the par package, the table package, and the tidy models package. And I'm assuming you can see all this all right for now. Um, so first, just a bit of introduction about me. I'm a PhD candidate in statistics at the Hamilton Institute and Maynard University in Ireland. I'm especially interested in tree-based models, uh, focusing, focusing on regularization for tree-based models and Bayesian additive regression trees. And you can um, find my GitHub or my Twitter using those uh, usernames there. Uh, this will be the summary of, summary of, our, of our talk uh, today. So I'm going to start introducing a little bit of the tree-based models, which will be the type of model we'll be discussing in this talk. And then we're going to talk a little bit about game penalization for tree regularization and regularization in the sense that we'll be uh, trying to find uh, the best models that use the least variables possible. We're going to describe a little bit of the data that we'll be using to actually see that in practice. And then we're going to start the actual uh, modeling part of this talk, which will be about how we do the train and test splits. Uh, how do we create a model list to fit our models? How do we build a modeling function to fit a bunch of models at once? How do we train all those models? And how do we evaluate uh, those models using the diverse package, of course? Uh, if you want, you can find the link of this talk at this link here. And later you, you're gonna find all the code and all the scripts for this talk itself at this uh, GitHub repository. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give a bit of a motivation first of why we're uh, seeing this talk. So using the tidyverse for machine learning is very good because it gives us basically all the tools we need for machine learning. It also gives a very clear and consistent syntax um, for our experiments. And it gives us some repos repos reproducibility advantages because we can store all the elements of our machine learning models, let's say all the training test sets, all the training parameters, all the models we use, all the evaluation metrics and et cetera, everything else that we need and only one object, which can be very, very useful if we need to, for instance, submit a code and data for a, a paper submission, for example, we can just submit this one object that will give everything that you need to reproduce the results of a paper. And that's very nice. Uh, in this talk, we're gonna go through the, some basic uh, machine learning steps. So we're gonna do a train test separation, we're gonna do a model definition, and we're gonna do a model evaluation. So nothing super fancy, just the basic stuff. <coughs> oh, sorry. And we're gonna start by giving by defining uh, the tree based models. So suppose we have, for example, a response variable or what we call a target variable y, which can be continuous or a class and a set of predictor variables X, which is sometimes also called a set of features. The tree-based model is a type of tree that stratified this uh, predictor space into regions by using binary splitting rules to find those regions, those prediction regions. So I put here one very, very simple example of what could be a decision tree for whether I should or I should not bring an umbrella today when I leave my house. So the first question that I might need to answer to decide that is, well, am I in Ireland first of all? Because I live in Ireland. Uh, so if yes, well, we should then always uh, bring an umbrella because in Ireland, it's basically all the time raining. But if you, answer, if you answer no to the question, maybe you should answer to some other binary decision or the binary rule to decide that. So it could be, for instance, is it sunny outside? So if yes, maybe you don't need to bring an umbrella because the weather is looking sunny and maybe it won't be rainy. 
Um, so maybe you should bring uh, sunglasses instead. But if no, maybe you better you better bring this umbrella because it will be better for you if it breaks. <coughs> I know that this part can be very, not very, but a little confusing, confusing. So if you have questions about these things, please uh, just let us know. So this is uh, this slide about the algorithm of the trees. So the, what a tree does is, is if it fits a model by using a recursive binary splitting algorithm. So what it does is that it selects uh, some predictor, let's say X, J, X, J, yeah, am I correct? Yeah. And it finds some cut point S such that the binary split uh, between, let's say, J is uh, smaller than S and J is uh, bigger or equal to S leads to the greatest reduction in the variance of Y. And what uh, that means in, pra in practice is that, that that split will lead to the, to the best reduction in the prediction error of Y. And we test all predictors and all available cut points uh, at this point. Um, by, doing, uh, by doing it that way, for each region that we find uh, doing that, we're gonna predict either the mean of Y in each region in the continuous case or the most common class in let's say a machine learning classification case. And we're gonna continue uh, doing this until some criterion is reached uh, for this model. Let's say we continue until no region contains more than five observations, for example. Um, and then I'm gonna introduce a little bit about a uh, game penalization for tree regularization, which is that it's a method for uh, trying to estimate tree models that use the least variables possible, because sometimes we want to build uh, good machine learning models, which is still use now, very few variables because sometimes variables are very, very expensive to get. So maybe we just we need to use just a few variable, variables so doing, we don't spend lots of money gathering variables to predict stuff. So this was firstly presented by Deng and Runger in a paper in 2013 where they also uh, proposed the penalization of the gain of each variable when viewed in a tree. Mm -hmm. And what this gain represents is, is is the reduction in the, in the prediction error that uh, using that variable in the tree would lead to. So, the, so the, the main idea of the paper is to weight down, weight down uh, the gains of those variables by a factor between zero and one. And in practice, what we will what we'll do is that the variables will have to be very, very important and be very go through the prediction to be actually picked uh, by the models. Um, so that's basically what's being said in this slide here. And just to do some, a bit of propaganda, um, he and my supervisors, we wrote a paper that kind of extends this idea a little bit. So it's uh, mentioned here at the end of the slide, if you're interested in a bit more details, but on this talk, we're just gonna uh, focus on the very, on the most uh, simple, uh, case of this method. And one good thing of, of tree-based models is that we can uh, build a bunch of different uh, models by just changing a few of the hyperparameters of the models. So this here is a list of all the models we're gonna uh, see in the stock. And um, the, the, all of them are basically tree models, but what changes is one hyperparameter one hyperparameter or other. Now I'm going to explain a little bit of what's uh, changing in each of those models. So the first um, model we're going to use is just a simple tree or a card model, which is uh, short for classification and regression tree. This model uses just one tree and uses m try, which is the number of variables that is tested at each split. This m try will be all the available for variables in the data. That's one type of tree-based model. The second type you're gonna use is the bagging model, which will be now an average of many trees, let's say 500 trees. And the M-try will also be all the available, available variables. 
Then we're gonna do some regularized bagging using the decaying penalization idea for regularization, which is uh, the same model as the bagging model, but now with the with the gain, the variable gain penalization by a factor between zero and one. Um, then we're gonna do the regularized bagging, which considers a different type of penalization, which is the depth penalization, which is the same as the regularized bagging but it adds an extra penalization by penalizing um, the variable when it, this variable is about to be picked in a very deep node of the tree because of variables that, so the idea is that the uh, variables that are picked in a very deep node of the tree are not very likely to give uh, a very good uh, improvement in the prediction error anyway. So we're gonna try to uh, penalize for that and try to uh, not pick ver new variables. Uh, when the model is already very, very deep. I don't know if this is too confusing. If it is, please just let me know. But the, the idea is supposed to be kind of simple. Seems and now we're gonna... pretty oh. clear so far. We have no questions yet. I have no questions yet? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's because this, this is too simple because people are not understanding. That's hope for the first option. Okay. And then we're gonna do... Uh, also the random forest model, which is now also an average of many trees, but the difference now is that the end try will be only the a square root of the number of total variables. Mm -hmm. That is done usually because in random forest we're trying to decorrelate uh, all the trees that we have in a forest. And then we're gonna do the same that as we did for the bagging. So we can have a regularized random forest, which now uses an average of many, many trees. The end try is a bit different in this case. So we're gonna use uh, half of all the available features. Oof. And we're gonna have a variable gain penalization of a, by a factor of between zero and one to penalize, so again, penalize the variables now to only pick the variables that are very, very important for the models. and. At last, we're gonna have a regularized random forest with that penalization uh, with the same thing as we did for the bagging. So we're gonna try to penalize even more the variables when they're about to be picked in very deep nodes of the trees because that's not very good when it happens. Okay, I hope this is all clear, but if you want to make any questions, please. Don't be afraid. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, that was the section about the models we're gonna um, see in this talk. And now we're gonna talk a little, a little bit about the data. So this data is a data set that Max Kuhn, which is one of the main authors of the tidy models package, package usually uses for his own workshops and etc. So for this data, the target variable will be the ridership, uh, which is the daily number of people entering the Clark and Lake train station in Chicago. So in this number being thousands, so thousands of people that are coming and going every day. And the goal will be to predict this variable, this variable, which is the ridership, and find the optimal variables for that. Because we're gonna have a bunch of variables in the data set, but maybe we don't want to use all those variables. And this data set will have we have 50 predictors. We're not gonna describe all of them here, but you should you should know that in that we're gonna have the current date, we're gonna have the 14-day led ridership at this station and other stations because maybe um, traffic, traffic, how many people are using the other stations maybe will influence also the, how many people are using this station. Um, we're gonna have a weather information, which is usually uh, important in cases. We're gonna have uh, the sporting schedules, which also kind of influence in how many people are using public transportation and some other variables that we have there in the data set. I'm just moving my zoom. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start by loading and visualizing our data. So you can see here in the first chunk of code that I'm loading the tidy verse uh, package, which is a collection of packages that loads a bunch of other packages. Uh, the same, uh, that's the same for the tidy models package. So the tidy models package is package is like a tidy verse or for modeling package, not only for machine learning, but also for inference models. 
we have we will have a bunch of different packages that are very useful for modeling in R. And we're gonna load uh, the Ranger package, which will be my let's say my package of choice for running tree-based models. Um, the data comes from the package styles, which is part of the tidy models. So we call the data by doing by doing dials uh, and she calling the data call Chicago. Sorry. <laughs> And what we're plotting here is just uh, the density of the target variable. So we have, we can have a better idea of this target variable looks like. So we can actually zoom in a little bit. And we can see by the density of this variable that it is multimodal. So that kind of gives an idea, an idea that this could be a good variable to be predicted by tree-based models, because we can imagine the, uh, the modes there, there are different, let's say, regions in a tree, for instance, that are very different. So trees can be very useful to predict this type of variable. We have an interesting distribution. And then we're going to move on to the actually modeling part of this talk. Mm, I hope everything is OK so far, if you have Questions, Justin? Do we have anything here? Okay. Seems like you are telling everything so clearly. Yes. Hope it's not very confusing. Okay. So now we're going to start uh, talking a bit more about code and about the results of the models. And the first step for the data that we have there is to separate uh, the data into the training set, which is the part of the data set that we're going to use to actually fit our models and the test set, which would be the part of the data we're gonna use to evaluate our models or to check uh, how good our models are doing. So the first thing I'm doing there is just to replicate uh, the data that we have, the Chicago data, 10 times, because I'm gonna, I want to run each of those models 10 times. And that is explained by the fact that we're gonna, Later, we're going to take an average of the results of those models. An average, they're much more consistent than just having just one run of the model, for instance. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we're going to create uh, this list of data sets. We're going to in-frame uh, them in a, in a table. And we're going to, right after that, we're going to create uh, the train and test set in one column called train and test set using the initial split function, which comes from uh, the tidy models uh, package. So this initial split uh, function will automatically create for us a string set in the proportion that is declared here, which is at three quarters. That is the same as 75% and then 25% for test. Um, so I'm not sure if everyone knows what a table is. So what table it's kind of like a evolve data frame. So instead of, so in a data frame, your columns need to be vectors. And in a table, you can actually have a list as columns. So you can see, we can see here in the first uh, rows of our tables, that let's say in the second column here, the f for the first row, we have a full table. The second row is a full table. The third row is a full table because this is a list column. So that basically means that you can have anything you want in that list column. Uh, the same is valid for the third column here. So the, the each row is a different train test split because this column is a list. So tables are very, very useful in this sense because they let you put anything there in the, in the data frame, which is very useful. So there's a train test, train underscore test column here will be a list with two elements uh, and that'll be the train and test sets that we're gonna access later to uh, run our models. This slide here is a bit ugly, but what we are doing is declaring a list of lists with all the parameters of our models, the, the models that we talked before in the modeling slot. So we're gonna declare here for the tree model, let's say that our M try will be uh, the total number of available features in the data. So the number of columns in the data, minus one, because one of them is the target variable. So we need to remove them. We're gonna use just one tree. So we set three is equals to one. Reg factor will be our regularization 
factor for the gain penalization. So in this case, it's one because that's equivalent to having no penalization. And we're not going to use the depth in, penaliza in the penalization because we're not even doing any variable penalization at all for the tree, for example. And then we can do the same thing for the bagging model. So now we, s we have the same number of variables for the M trine, but now we change the trees to 100. So we have a bunch of trees who don't have any regularization and we're not using the depth. And that changes for the uh, regularized bagging. So now the only thing that changes here is that the regularization factor move, uh, changed to 0 0.7. So now our variables will be, will be penalized by a factor of 0 0.7. And then we have the bagging model with regularization and with uh, that penalization. So what changed from this row to this row, from this line to this line, is that the depth uh, parameter now is equal to true. And those were the bagging models. And now we're going to declare our random forest models. Um, the first thing that changes is that our m trine is now the square root of the total of, um, the total of uh, available features or predictors in our data set. And we still have 100 trees. And in the first case, we're not going to regularize it. So the regulariza regularization factor is 1. And now using the depth. But then we change it. The next one is now a regular regularized forest. Um, now our m try is half of the variables we have in a data set. And our regularization factor changed to 0 0.7. We're going to do, we're going to run the same model for now considering the depth and the penalization. So now what changes from this part to this part is that now we have the depth here. And we're going to also uh, check what happens to the random forest when we have a bit of a harsher penalization, let's say, because in the next line, we change our regularization factors to, to 0 0.2, which is uh, much less than 0 0.7 that we had, we were using for later. Um, and unless we're going to have a regular, regularized forest um, that is much more regularized, but also considering the depth. Um, we are doing this because one thing that we are interested in sometimes in machine learning is hyperparameter tuning. So we want to check uh, how we want to, we want to find uh, the best model by uh, trying different values for our hyperparameters. So in order to do that, we need to run a bunch of models with different hyperparameters. So that's more or less in a, in a very small scale of what we are doing here. Of course, uh, people usually do that by setting a bunch of different hyperparameters. Here we're just using a few of them and checking um, how they will behave, let's say. And then also, I'm also going to unframe this list into a table um, where the first column will be the model name, so those model names here, and the second column will be a list of the parameters. And I'm going to use this list in the function that we're going to build in the next step. Um, everything good so far? If it's too confusing, just ask, because I know this is a very full slide and it might not make that much sense. No questions. Very good. So what we're going to do next, next is to add this list of models to our main table. So from that data table um, table that we had before, which has all our data, it has all our training and test sets, we're going to cross it with the list of models. And what this, what this means is that we're going to create all the combinations of all the roles that were in this table with all these models. We're going to come from a table that had uh, 10, 10 roles, uh, cross it with nine different models, and we're going to end up with a table that has 90 roles. So we're combining all the training test sets with all the models so we can run all the training test sets for all the models. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. And this arrange uh, function at the end is just to arrange uh, the data by name, basically. So the bag in here is showing for us because B is comes before the other rows. So what do we have so far? We have a table with all the training test data, and we have 
um, all the model specifications, then we have all the parameter combinations here and a list, which will make it much easier for us to run the models later. And then we're gonna move on to actually building a function to uh, model our data using all those model specifications that we set there. Uh, we're gonna be using the Ranger package through the Parsnip interface. So the Parsnip is a package that is in the Titan models um, group of packages. There will be some main arguments, which are um, arguments that are in all of the, let's say, all of the random forest um, packages that are available in the Parsnip. Because, uh, so the Parsnip will, will give it to you the option of using many different packages. And we're gonna use uh, the Ranger package in this case. So there will be there will be some main arguments that are common to all those packages, let's say for the random forest packages. And there'll be some package specific arguments to be uh, set here in this function too, which in this case for the random packet ranger package will be the regularization factor that we're using and the regularization, the option of using the depth or not. The option of using the depth or not in the regularization. And that happens because this option is not available in the other uh, three packages, but it is available in the ranger package. Mm -hmm. But our function here receives as the first argument the training data. That's why it's right here. And then it receives the M try, it receives the number of trees that we want, it receives the regularization factor that we're gonna be using. It receives the decision of whether we're gonna be considering the depth or not in this regularization. It gets the formula that we'll be using in the model, which will kind of be fixed into this formula here, which is just considering the right ridership and the, that train station and all the predictor variables that we have in the data set. And we're gonna have a mode, which is just uh, to define later in the reinforce function, which type of model we want. Is it a regression or a classification model? So in this case, it will be a regression model. Mm -hmm. And inside this function, the first thing that we do is to create this model setup argument which first uh, receives uh, the rainforest function from the parsnip uh, package, which uh, needs to receive uh, the mode of this model. So this would be a regression model with this and try and this number of trees. And this function already kind of specifies that it's a random forest. And then we set the specific engine, which is the specific package that we want to use to run this model. So we're gonna say that it's the Ranger package, which is a very good package for um, many tree-based models. It's very, very fast. And we specifically need to set the, the since we're using the Ranger package, we gonna, uh, we want to use uh, also the regularization factor argument uh, using this regularization uh, value. <laughs> and we're gonna be using the regularization use depth argument, which will receive uh, whether we're gonna use the depth or not. For the function. Okay, so this will be this object here has the model setup that we're going to fit into the data. And then this object here called uh, US. Oh, it's just an object that uh, will give us, gives us a list of holidays in the US. And I'm creating this object because I'm going to use it to create a new variable in my data later. Because I'm imagining, for this, for instance, that I have uh, I have the data, the date variable in my data set, but I don't have the, the holidays uh, information about that. So I'm gonna add this this information to know uh, if which days were holidays in our data set. So my, that might help uh, in the prediction of a variable, for example. So first, we create this auxiliary. Uh, object here, just they'll be used to tell us uh, when were the holidays in the in this data set, and then we're gonna create a recipe, which is a function that comes that comes from the recipe package recipes package that is also a part of the tidy models collection of package. So what this recipe does is basically set a recipe like a, a overall definition of 
what our data will be in this model. The first thing that we do is that we introduce, we put the recipe there. I'm sorry if it's confusing. The recipe there by saying that our formula will be this formula here. So first I want this type of model here. So the ridership, I want to use the ridership as my target variable and I want to use this dot here it means that I want to use all the available features, all the, I want to put in the model all the available features I have in the data set. And the data will be the train data, which will come later, will be put in the function here. And then I'm gonna use the step holiday function to create a variable that will tell, tell us uh, from the dates that we have when was it, was it a holiday or not in the US? And then I'm gonna use the step date function, which just creates, sort of create, sort of create takes the date a variable that we already have in the train date, uh, data set and creates a nicer factor uh, column for that. Uh, it'll be, it basically turns the date variable that we have there in a factor variable, which is better for the model for some practical, practical reasons. Oh. <sighs> I hope it's not very confusing. Do we have any questions? No. Okay. I think this type of interface that the tidy models gives, it, gives to us is it's very interesting because you declare everything that you're doing there and the model kind of uh, very clearly and consistently. So this would be the formulation of a model, let's say. And then we prep this recipe by using the prep function. And then when we actually fit the model, we get oh, the model set up, which was set here. So this is the configuration of the model we're using. Then we use the fit function from the parsnip um, package. We put our formula here, which is again, this one that is going to be set there forever in a function. And we use the juice of the, the preps object, which is, um, so since we gave, we gave all this modifications to the, date, to the data, let's say we added the holiday, we changed uh, the date variable into something that is a factor, we now get, uh, we take the data and put all this modifications in there and use that to fit the model here, if that makes sense. And then we just return, we just return the fit object, which will be the actual, the final model that we're fitting here. If, it sounds a bit confusing, but I think it will be clearer when we run the models. So if we, if we take a look of how do our model configuration looks like. So if we print this model setup object here, uh, it's going to tell us that this would be a random forest model specification for regression. Uh, the main arguments are the mtry argument and the number of trees and the engine specific arguments is the regularization factor and the regularization depth and the computation engine which is the actual package that we're using to run this model would be the ranger package here it says that the random here it says it's a random model specification but in reality we're running a bunch of different models because the for the tree based models they're basically nested models. So when we change one hyperparameter, you end up with a different model. And now we're going to actually train all those models. So we're going to be training 19 models at once, which can be kind of slow. So for my computer here, this took about 10 minutes, which is not even that much for 90 models. But just so you're aware, if you if you leave this running, for instance, if it's being slow, it's because it's actually slow because it's too many models. Um, so the first thing we do here is that we get our data table again, which has our training data, our testing data, and now our model and uh, parameters that we set for that model. We're gonna create a column that is called all parameters, which be, which will be basically a list um, that contains all the parameters of the models that we had set before. And we will get, so what this map here is doing is that it's going into the train test column and getting just the training set. And then we adding, so 
to the list of parameters, the string set as a list argument. Okay, so this list of all parameters here, we have we'll have all the parameters of the model, of the models, and each of the training sets that we we split before. And then to actually run the model, we're gonna use this invoke map function um, and use the mod this our previous function called modeling that we created here that does all this and return the fit in model. And we're gonna use the all parameters uh, column for that. So what this invoke map here is doing is that it's doing the same thing as a map, more or less, but it's it's kind of, so since this all parameters list here will be a name list, so in this all parameters there will be ugh, in each list of this column called all parameters, we're gonna have the objects and their named objects. So there will be an object called M try and then the value for M try. There will be an object called trees and then the value for trees that we want for each, we want for each model. So the invoke map, map function we kind we kind of know that already so we'll go there in the all parameters columns column and take the m try the the, of the object of the list that is called m try and we'll assume that this is the m try that we want for this uh for the modeling function here so we'll put this m try here and put the number of trees called which is the object called trees here and etc so we don't we don't have to uh, specify what goes where because that is already a named list and then the invoke map will know that the argument names, names of these functions, oh, the arguments for the function, this function will come from this name list here. I don't know if this is too confusing, but just please let me know. <coughs> this kind of kind of makes sense when you when you think about it because it's a name list. And then you have a function that receives a bunch of arguments that also have names. So you just kind of match it, matches the names of the um, arguments of that function there. And then, then you run all those models at once. So that was it for the training of the model. So we're just with this, it could be here four lines of code. You're running 19 models at once. And then after that, we can already start by evaluating our models. So to figure which are the best, best models, we're gonna check uh, the root mean squared error of the models. We're gonna check uh, the total number of variables used in the model and the um, R squared uh, of each model, which is, in this case, is very related to the root mean squared error. But for that to happen, first we're gonna create a function that is called RMSC, which stands stands for root mean squared error. Uh, for this function to work, we're gonna get uh, the model, we're gonna get our test data, and then the formula will be the same as we already used in the modeling function. And this US hole is just an auxiliary object, so just so we can create in the test data the same variables that we created in the training data to run the model. So we do uh, so these steps here, they're exactly the same as we did in the modeling function because we're adding the extra, let's say the extra columns to our data. And then we are prepping this extra columns in the data and we're getting, we're extracting this, the data plus all the extra columns of the data to input in the predict function. So what the prediction predict function, function would do is that it will it will predict in this case for the for the test set uh, it will make a prediction for the models that we run so it will, it will tell us tell the tell us what the model thinks that the ridership will be for this uh, testing data uh, so this is being stored in the pp object here and then we calculate the root mean square error which is the squared just the root of the mean squared error of uh, the models. Okay, so this will tell them, tell them more or less um, how far the predictions of this model of the models are from the actual observed data that is in the test set. Does that make sense? 
this is a very very known metric so we don't I don't think it's uh, that difficult okay but if you have any questions just ask and we are also going to check the number of variables that we will use and those models so for this is those specific uh, ranger models, we extract those variables by doing this. So we have to go to the model object, to the to the fit object that is inside the model object, get the forest, and get all the split var IDs. This will be a list, so we have to unlist this, and then we get all the unique um, variable IDs that appear on those models, because let's say for the random forest and baggings, we have a bunch of different trees, so we are trying to get this here will be a list for each of the trees, so we need to unlist that and just get the unique values to know which of the variables were actually in the models. And just and then we just get the length of the unit, which would tell us tell us how many variables were in were used in each model. <coughs> And then our final step will be the actual evaluation of the model. So what we created here were two functions, the RMC function and the number of variables function, just so we can extract those two metrics from our 90 models that we run there. So for the RMC, first we're gonna do that by using the map to double function by um, introducing, inputting the model train column, which is a column that contains all the model that we run, and then our testing data, which is now get uh, by using the testing function into the training test column, which is, again, the first thing that we did. We split uh, our data into training test and create a whole column of that. And then we're going to use the RMSE function to calculate using each mo uh, train model and each uh, testing data, the RMSEs. So this would be a whole new column in our table that has the RMSCs for each model. Um, more or less the same thing for the number of variables, but in this case, we just need to input the model train object. So we're gonna calculate for each model that was trained, the number of variables that was, that was used. And we're gonna get the R squared from each model. And uh, for that, we don't even need a function because uh, that is actually a store in each model object. So we just go there into the model, we go into the fit, uh, object inside this model and we get the object that is called R squared. And what you see here in this table is a table, it's the average uh, for all the 10 data sets of this metrics. It's the average of this metrics for all this thing that this, the 10 data sets that we use. The 10, not the 10 data sets, but the 10 different uh, training and testing uh, splits that we did. So we can see that if we're considering the, the root mean squared error, the begging model is uh, the best model because it produces the lowest uh, root mean squared error. That means that the model is predicting very well because its predictions are very close to what we see in the testing data. But on the other hand, it also uses, um, this is all the variables that we had in the data sets, the 50 variables, plus the variables that were created in the recipe step. And this model also has a very high R squared, which is understandable because the predictions are very, 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 very good. But let's say we're actually looking for a model that uses uh, less of the variables, but it uh, doesn't predict that bad. We could be using a bagging regularized model which uses now an average starting variables that if you compare to 71, it's mainly less variables. But it might still have, let's say, an acceptable root mean square error. Root mean square error. Um, we can compare this uh, value here, for instance, with the random forest value. So for instance, for the random forest, the root mean square error is also higher than the root mean square root mean square error for the bagging, but it still uses lots of variables. So let's say if I have to choose 
between this model and this model, maybe I should choose to use the one that uses the less variables because that's what I can afford, for instance. And I still can kind of tolerate uh, a bit more error. So basically the choice of which model is the best. Uh, uh, well, well, looking at this table, it kind of depends on what's your metric for saying that. So is it, is it the variable? Is it the model that uses the less variables? Is, is it the model that, that has the lowest arithmetic error because I can afford to have all the variables? So that's that type of table is useful for that. We can check, uh, for instance, um, the results of the other hyperparameters, the other hyperparameters. So for instance, uh, the models that were regularized and also use an extra penalization um, considering the depth of H3 regularize more, let's say, and like this, the trees, because in average, the, the, not the trees, but the full models are using less variables. Let's consider, for instance, the bagging model, which was regularized and used the depth in comparison to the model that was regularized and didn't use the depth. It's using a few less variables, but it's all, it also has a higher root mean square, mean square error. For the random forest, for instance, um, the same thing happened because this model here that is regularized and used the depth uses less variables than the model that was only regularized. And this was the model that was um, not so regularized. It was not uh, so harshly regularized. So if we, comp if we compare this model here to the second, uh, the second, um, random forest that was regularized but had a harsher regularization, we can see that this harsher regularization led to the use of less variables, let's say. It's this number compared to this number here, but it also increases a bit of um, the root mean square error. Mm. But in this case, it happened that using the depth did not uh, necessarily lead to using less of the variables. So we still have um, a bit more of the variables that uh, were used in the, on the simply regularized model, if that makes sense, if that's not too confusing. And then for the tree model, which is our, let's say our weakest model, because all the other models, they have actually a bunches of trees, a hundred trees. So it's, it's understandable if their prediction power is much better than uh, just one tree. So this tree uh, has almost one of the highest uh, root mean square errors there. And it uses 64 of uh, the variables, which might not be what we want, for instance, because we can see that we have uh, better options than that in this table. <clears throat> If we want, we can also take a closer look at the RMSE values. So from this plot here, we can see that the bagging model is actually the best model if we consider this metric because uh, its values are very, are centered, let's say in 1.6 uh, something. What we have, uh, if you check the tree model, for instance, if this is a model that has a much higher var variation because uh, sometimes the model has an RMSC that gets to 3.4, let's say, and sometimes it gets to two. So maybe that's a much more unstable model in case we need to run this model again for um, a new testing data or some new data that we have and we want to predict for it. So maybe this model is not the best. And that kind of happens to some of the other models. Some of them have uh, a bigger variance than let's say the bagging one and other models as, such as the random forest are much more consistent because they're explicitly centered in some value here, like the random forest model and even the regularized, regularized bagging mm -hmm. model is very well centered here in just one value. So this means <coughs> that you have a bit more confidence of, let's say when you get a new data, when, where will you, your prediction error will be, we will be around here, we will be around here, which you, which you, we don't really have that much when, when you're using a tree because your prediction error cannot be here, cannot be here, cannot be here, and you, you don't know 
uh, depending on what you use in your model for, if you can actually take a prediction error though here, or if you prefer one that will be strictly here, or etc. <coughs> And the final object that we have for now this is a big table of 90 rows and 10 columns, which has our data, our training and test data, it has our model specification, and it has the parameters of the, of, of the models. And then this column, which is just a combination of the training data with all the parameters of the models. It has the final fit of all the models in this uh, model train column. It has our final RMSC for each of the models, and then we don't see it there, but we also have the number of variables column, and we have the R squared column. So let's say you're trying to uh, publish a paper that uses these models, and they want the code and the data for these models, so you can give all the codes that you use. Let's say it was this code, and you can also send in this full object here, which it has everything that you use for this whole analysis and then can replicate your data, which makes your analysis much more trustable. And that's actually one of the conclusions that I put here. So now we can build a unique object to store everything at the same time, everything that we might be using in a machine learning um, analysis, let's say. So all the data, all the training tests, the uh, train and test sets, all the seeds that we use, all the hyperparameters, all the models that we fit, all the results, all the metrics that you use, all the computation to the details and all the other things that we might have in machine learning. So this is very useful to quickly compare the models as we did here. So we just uh, summarized 90 models in this table very quickly and compare them. And this is also very useful for reproducibility things such as um, when we need to reproduce the results of papers or reports or etc. And also, if you want to save kittens, please use PAR, because PAR is amazing. PAR is one of the main packages that we use throughout this talk. Well, that's why. And this is a few of the references, the two references that I put there. So the paper that pr proposes the uh, game penalization regularization, and then the paper, the, my paper, paper my supervisors that improves that a uh, little bit. And that is it for this talk. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you so much.